Welcome to this lecture on the arterial blood supply to the brain. Now this lecture, the main learning that comes from this lecture is firstly the main vessels that supply the brain and how they form particularly the circle of Willis and then secondly what vessels supply the major regions of the brain. So before we start let's just get our orientation. Here we've got the brain on the underside. So what you can see is, so it's like you've pulled the brain out from the skull and you've laid it and looked underneath it. So we've got the, the cerebellum here, we've got the medulla or the spinal cord coming up to the medulla, we've got the pons dilated there, the midbrain will sit in kind of here, we've got the mammillary bodies, the pituitary stalk, the optic chiasm which will go to the optic nerve and then the olfactory bulb, bulb and tracts and they're sitting behind all of this are the lobes of the cerebrum. Where if we go across to these two images this is the, a side lateral view so we're looking at the brain in the side so we've got the frontal, the parietal lobes, the temporal lobe, occipital lobe, cerebellum kind of coming underneath and then the brain stem like that and looking on the other side, so this is the right side of the brain, we've also got the frontal, bit of temporal, brainstem, cerebellar, occipital, and then parietal, like so. So, the arteries that supply the brain, well, there's only two pairs that you need to worry about, and these are what we call the vertebral arteries and the internal carotid arteries. So it's these two vessels that will supply the, all the artery blood, arterial blood to the brain itself. So let's go through each one um, separately and see how they form. Now the majority of the blood that go into the brain will go in to, more towards the grey matter because that's much more oxygen hungry and needs a great deal more um, nutrients and flow than the white matter. So that's the kind of the way it's arranged. So let's start with the vertebral arteries. So these are paired, as I said, and they're going to be coming up from the, the neck. And so we've got two vertebral arteries coming up on either side that will kind of join in the midline just on the inferior aspect of the pons. So the vertebral vessels, they branch posteriorly and superiorly off the subclavian artery and they will kind of go inwards and then go into the vertebra. So the cervical vertebra, they will enter the cervical vertebra at level C6 and they go, actually, they go between, or well, they go in a hole on the um, transverse processes of these cervical vertebra. So from C6 there's a hole that they go through which is the transverse foramen and they go through 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 and then what happens is they kind of start to curl around, go through the dura and arachnoid and then they go up through the foramen magnum. So now they, they're coming up on either side and they give off three main branches. So, so this is the vertebral, this is the vertebral, so if we get our bearings this is going to be the left side, so this is the left, this is the right. So as it's going up it will give one branch that will come down like so and that's going down towards the spinal cord. So that's going to be the anterior spinal artery and you're going to have also one that will wrap around the back and give you the posterior spinal artery. But before they um, join in, in the midline it will give another one which is going to go down like so and that's going to be the posterior inferior cerebellar artery which you can see here's a cerebellum sitting like that so it's going to go down and sit on the underside but posterior behind so this is the underside of the cerebellum but on the back side so that's the posterior inferior cerebellar artery so there's three arteries that come off the vertebral artery before it comes into the one so here now we're in the midline at the inferior aspect of the pons and we're going to run up the length of the pons on the ventral surface or the anterior surface of the pons and this is going to be called what we call the bacilla artery. The bacilla artery will give another or an early branch on either side. So like we saw in the vertebral artery we have three major branches. The bacilla will also give three major branches. So we've seen this first branch and this is going to be the opposite of the posterior inferior. This is going to be the anterior inferior cerebellar artery. And then what we'll have is we'll have these little pontine 
vessels or arteries coming off that's supplying the ponds, they're the pontine vessels. And then just before we finish in the bacilla artery, we will give another branch, which is the superior cerebellar artery. And that's essentially the finishing of the the posterior supply of the brain. So this is kind of as the vertebral arteries and a lot of these vessels are going to supply really the um, brain stem itself. And so we've got the two vertebrals. The vertebrals give the three branches off, then we form the bacilla, which runs on the front of the pons. They give three vessels, or three arteries paired. They're going to have the, um, the anterior inferior cerebellar artery, a whole little clustering of the pontine arteries, and then we finish off with the um, superior cerebellar artery. And then we go into one of the first major blood vessels to the um, cerebrum, which is the posterior, the posterior cere cerebral artery or PCA, PCA, okay? And that's where it finishes there. Let's have a quick look of what it supplies. So the medulla, the brainstem of the medulla, is going to be supplied, um, well the main vessels that are going to supply the medulla is going to be the vertebrals and a bit of the bacilla will supply the ventral surface, probably also a bit of the anterior spinal artery. And then we're also going to get um, the posterior inferior cerebral artery is going to supply the medulla as well. Why I'm telling you this, well you can get two if there's blockages to, to those vessels, you can get kind of two syndromes, what we call a medial and a lateral medullary syndrome. If it is a medial um, medullary syndrome, it's affecting the anterior spinal vessel and that can cause an, uh, an impact on the hypoglossal nerve, which will cause defi deficits in the hypoglossal nerve and that's going to impact your tongue. Whereas if you have an issue with the posterior inferior cerebellar artery, which is going around the back, the lateral aspect and the posterior part of the medulla, it's going to cause what we call lateral medulla syndrome and that's going to affect the vagus nerve and the glossopharyngeal nerve and that's going to cause problems to the vocal cords and the pharyngeal muscles and that's going to cause dysphonia or, or dysphagia, so that's a problem there. So that's the supply of the medulla. The supply to the pons is going to be the pontine and the or part of the anterior uh, inferior cerebellar artery. And when we go to the midbrain, it's going to be supplied by the posterior cerebral artery and the su superior cerebellar artery. So all those vessels we just did, and we saw that are supplied mostly the brainstem, is going to be from the vertebral arteries. Compare that, and that came into the into the cranium through um, the foramen magnum. Compare that to the internal carotids. So the internal carotids are going to come in on either side here. So the internal carotids are a branch off the common carotid and that's going to come up, bifurcate at about C4, external carotid will go to the face and neck, internal carotid will come into the cranium through the carotid canal, so they enter in, kind of do a 90 degrees and then another 90 degrees and go over a foramen called foramen lacerum where they now enter the cranial cavity. Now when they enter the cranial cavity they give off three major branches. They'll give a little branch off called the ophthalmic branch which is going to go to the eye. They're going to also give what we call a posterior communicating branch which is going to go back to the posterior cerebral artery and that communicate with it. And this is important because we now are forming a part of the circle of Willis which gives the ability to be able to blood coming up from the posterior supply will meet blood coming from the anterior supply and they can anastomose to give it and give it like this equalized blood supply. Okay, Only about 12 to 15 percent is coming from the vertebral arteries whilst you know 80 plus percent is coming from the internal carotid arteries. So much more from the front than the back but we have this ability to communicate between the posterior communicating arteries. Okay, So that's one branch, the other branch is ophthalmic. Then what happens is we have this big vessel that's a continuation, it's the main continuation of the internal carotid and that's the middle cere cerebral artery, so that's the big one that goes in middle and the rest 
is going to go into the middle, sorry, into the anterior aspect, and that's going to be the anterior cerebral vessel, like so. Now, these anterior are going to run kind of behind the optic nerve, but they will give a communicating branch between them, which is going to be the anterior communicating artery. Now, together, I'll just draw it over in green, we now have a circle. So this is now this is a nice circle, which is the circle of Willis. So from the posterior supplies coming essentially from the vertebrals and the bacilla, and then into the posterior cerebral, which is meeting the internal carotid through the posterior communicating, which gives the back part of the circle, whereas this part, which is the internal carotid, comes in, the anteriors go forward, anterior cerebral, anterior cerebral, but we communicate at the front with the anterior uh, communicating artery, and that gives you this nice big circle of Willis. Now, the circle of Willis, what it has inside it uh, is the optic chiasm and the pituitary stalk. Nothing else is kind of inside that area. So let's quickly just finish off with seeing what these three vessels or three paired vessels from the internal carotid actually supply. So just to reiterate, we've got the middle, the anterior, and the posterior. Now, all these three paired vessels will supply the cerebrum and the deeper diencephalon and the deeper cortical vessels. We saw all the cerebellum and we saw the brainstem was supplied by the the back supply, so the, the cerebellum is supplied by the posterior inferior cerebellar artery, which is down here. The other part of the inferior surface is the anterior inferior cerebellar artery, and the final top surface of the cerebellum is the superior cerebellar artery. So that's the cerebellum, and that's the brainstem, but what about the, um, the cerebrum? So let's start with the, the two middle cerebral vessels. So I'll do this one in red. So this basically is going to supply all this region here. So this is the middle cerebral vessel. So all this blood, all this region of the brain here is going to be the middle cerebral vessel and just this part here of the temporal lobe. This is the temporal lobe here, so this part here. So that's middle cerebral vessel. Now, the middle cerebral, as I said, is the most the continuation of the internal carotid, so it's got a big lumen continuation. So if you're going to have a embolic stroke, so a stroke coming up from below in the carotids, so a clot coming up, the most likely place it's going to block is the middle cerebral vessel. So this is going to be a region here or here that's going to be affected. So if you think about it, the most common deficits that you're going to see are sensory and motor, which is going to be in the parietal region. And that's going to cause, particularly um, because we're not f impacting this area here, which is going to be more legs. So we're going to have deficits to the opposite side of the body, arms and legs and face, also the language centers. So the, the type of deficit that you would get from an MCA um, stroke or deficit is going to be problems maybe more with the arms on the opposite side, the face and problems talking or um, communication. Okay, so that's the MCA. And as we said, it's probably the most common place to get an embolic stroke just because of the size of the vessel as it comes in. The other thing I will say is in terms of subarachnoid bleeds, so this is bleeds in the subarachnoid space, about 90% is from aneurysms are in that circle of Willis. And so 90% of subarachnoid bleeds come from an aneurysm in that circle of Willis. Now going to the anterior cerebral vessels, so these are the ones going forward, going to the frontal lobe, going to the eyes, etc. We saw that they had a communication branch here. So I'll do this one in yellow and so this is going to be this part of the brain if this is affected. So this is all the watershed area of the anterior cerebral vessels as well as all this area. So kind of 
all this area is going to be anterior cerebellar vessels. Okay. And if you have a de deficit here, it's also going to f affect sensory motor, but it's probably going to be more on the legs or perineum. So you might have, the patient might have problems with uh, urinating or defecating or with the leg movements as well as other behavioural changes, etc. So that's the anterior vessels. And then finally, the posterior, so I'll do this one in green. This is this vessel here, the posterior cerebral. That's going to be the remaining. So that's going to be this region here, back to the occipital lobe and then down to the inferior gyrus of the temporal lobe and then all this area in here. So that's going to be PCA or posterior cerebral artery effects. So as you can see, those three paired structures, the PCA, the MCA and the ACA or the posterior cerebral, middle cerebral, anterior cerebral, you can see their watershed blood anastomotic areas. So there's quite distinct regions and that's where they kind of um, meet one another. And so it's those three vessels that really supply your cerebrum and your deeper cortical structures, as well as probably a bit of diencephalon. Whereas the posterior supply coming from the vertebrals is supplying more brainstem and cerebrum, cerebellum, should I say. So hopefully by now, you, the take home message is you've understood how the circle of Willis has, has formed the two main vessels that supply the brain itself and then the further breakdown of the structures that they supply.